Hello everyone, this is Kevin from Edureka and welcome to this video on how to become cloud engineer. Cloud computing has swept across the world and has found its way in every walk of life, in every type of industry, and every sphere of life. And partly due to COVID-19, the demand for cloud computing has skyrocketed. More on that later. First, let's check out the agenda for this video. We'll start off by talking about why is there such a great demand for cloud engineers. Here we'll take a look at facts and figures of cloud computing and the reasons for cloud computing becoming so famous and popular. Then we'll talk about why become a cloud engineer. Is it even worth it? Should you even give it a shot? Next up, we will talk about what does a cloud engineer do? Here we'll talk about roles and responsibilities and skills required for cloud engineer. Then we'll talk about how to become a cloud engineer by drawing a roadmap. Lastly, we'll close off with a few useful resources that you can take advantage of to get started. Please like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel and also do not forget to smash that bell icon to be notified of any updates from Edureka YouTube channel. Also the link for cloud certification is going to be in the description. Please do check out that link as well. All right, so the first topic, why is there such a high demand for cloud engineers? Well, there's such a high demand for cloud engineers because there's a high demand for cloud computing. Let's take a look at some facts and figures. In 2016, the market share for cloud computing industry was 90 billion, which rose to $312 billion in 2020. It is projected that at the same compounded annual growth rate of 17.5% that we have been experiencing from 2016 to 2020, with the extrapolating that to 2025, it will hit $832 billion, which is doubling from now. Google Workspace platform has reached a whopping 2 billion users in 2020. Just to put things in perspective, that is one-fourth the total population of the planet Earth. Dropbox has also achieved an interesting milestone of 700 million users in 2020. Now when it comes to market share in cloud computing, AWS leads the chart by 32%. Microsoft Azure is next at 20% and Google Cloud at 9%. There are a dozen other cloud providers, but we're not going to talk about them. Feel free to search about them on the internet. Next, there are very many applications of cloud computing like infrastructure as a service, software as a service, platform as a service, cloud storage, data backup, data recovery, etc. And due to COVID, like we spoke about earlier, companies have started to adopt the cloud computing if they were not thinking about adopting it in the first place. This is partly due to the fact that their employees have to work from home. And cloud computing facilitates this. When asked, 75% employees prefer work from home or a hybrid style where they work partly from home and partly from office. So I hope from all the facts and figures, you were able to see that there's a high demand for cloud computing. Now, let's move on to talk about why there is such a high demand for cloud computing. Number one reason, agility. Organizations can develop innovative projects on the cloud computing infrastructure without having to worry about physical infrastructure itself. What this enables them to do is test out crazy, innovative, out-of-the-box ideas immediately instead of having to wait on building an infrastructure for the special project, which requires a lot of manpower and concentrated effort and resources to make. As a result, more and more projects are getting to the finish line and none of the projects are falling off the track like it used to traditionally. Elasticity. As the organization's needs changes, the cloud computing resources can be adjusted or scaled up and down. And this is provided by most of the cloud providers these days. This helps the organizations tremendously as it saves a lot of resources and it provision resources when there's a need. Next up is cost savings. This is hands down one of the best reasons why companies and startups are going for cloud computing. It's, it's a reason that they don't actually have to set up their physical infrastructure, that is data centers and physical servers, initially. 
They can just provision resources, whatever they need, the whole infrastructure in the cloud and just select a pay as you go plan. So there is no big hurdle that they have to climb over in order to start a company. And they can expand into different regions without having to worry about how they're going to obtain new computers, new resources. How are they going to set up a team in that area so that they can become operational in that area. Next, and the last reason that we're going to see is deployed globally in minutes. An organization can have their customers throughout the world. Now, with the help of cloud providers that have data centers, hundreds and thousands of them spread across the whole world, deploying applications on servers which are closest to the customers, which enriches their experience due to reduction of lag and delay. All of this could be done in minutes and using a web browser. So I hope now you can comprehend why there's such a big demand for cloud computing. Let's now jump into why become a cloud engineer. Is it even worth becoming a cloud engineer? Oh yes, it is. And we're going to break it down for you. The first one is job opportunities that we're going to be taking a look at and we'll see who's hiring. And then lastly, we'll take a look at salaries if they're any good. First up, job openings. Well, there are very many job openings, especially in United States and India. Indeed says there's about 25,700 jobs at the time of this video in India and about 87,000 jobs in United States for a cloud engineer. Now, obviously you're wondering who is hiring these many people? Well, all the Fortune 500 companies when it comes to technology are crazy for cloud engineers as they're facing more and more challenges with security and breaches and they want good cloud engineers to solve problems that they're experiencing. Obviously with all of that investment in cloud computing market and all of the companies that are after a cloud engineer, the salaries are going to be attractive and same as reflected in India, the base salary for a cloud engineer is around 960,000 rupees a year. And in the United States, it is approximately 118,000 US dollars. Now keep in mind these are base salaries. We're not including things such as incentives, bonuses, allowances, or benefits. So the actual package could be much better. Now that you're probably convinced that it's an amazing opportunity, we should take a look at what does a cloud engineer do? Well, in a nutshell, cloud engineers are responsible for managing an organization's cloud-based systems and processes. Cloud engineers can end up doing a lot of different things in an organization. Therefore, there are many specialties within an organization, such as cloud architecture, cloud storage, cloud networking, cloud security, etc. Let's now take a look at the roles and responsibilities of a cloud engineer. First, he's responsible for setting up architectures using cloud providers like AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, etc. They're also responsible for managing DevOps pipelines. So it's paramount that they know DevOps tools. They should be able to recognize all of the elements of the pipeline, know how it works, as most of the pipelines are deployed in the cloud these days. Next up, they're also responsible for migrating existing infrastructure to the cloud. Also, they're responsible for scaling the infrastructure according to the organization's needs. Now, most of the cloud providers, they provide scaling automatically. But as the organization and the infrastructure gets more complex, this is not always viable. So, it's the duty of cloud engineer to make sure the scaling is done in an optimized way. Another thing that they're responsible for is educating the teams on the implementation of new cloud technologies and initiatives. So they're also responsible for getting everybody up to speed and training them if they're lagging behind so that everything keeps working harmoniously. Next thing that they're responsible for is security and access of cloud-based systems. So they worry about things like who should have access and what access should they have to. They're also responsible for managing junior solutions architects to make sure that the solutions that they're coming up with are adequate and in tune with the organization's needs. Lastly, they're responsible for administering, maintaining and troubleshooting problems on the cloud platform. Now these were some roles and responsibilities. Let's move on to skills required. 
We're gonna do so by taking a look at three different job descriptions from three different companies. The first one is from IBM Cloud Support Engineer. You can take a moment and read into it, but I'm just gonna give you the gist of it. So there's emphasis on Linux or Unix based OS. You should know the command line interface for Linux as well. Uh, you should know how to deploy things in cloud and you should know maintenance tools like Kubernetes, Ansible, Puppet, Terraform, etc. You should know cloud computing tools like IBM. Of course, this is IBM company, so you should know IBM cloud. Usually it is AWS or Google or Azure. And usually those are the most common ones in the entire world. But since this is IBM, we got to know IBM cloud. The candidate should also be aware of the cloud monitoring tools and know how to use them like Prometheus Logstacks so that they can monitor the systems that are in the cloud. They should also be well versed with object oriented design principles. Lastly, they should know web design, SOA and APIs such as REST, SOAP, XML, JSON, etc. Next one is from Barclays. I'm just going to give you the gist of it. You can read into it. Pause the screen if you want to. But here's the emphasis. The candidate should know AWS services and how to scale them. They should know Linux and Windows operating system. They should know configuration management deployment tools like Terraform, AWS, CloudFormation and Chef. DevOps tools like Jenkins, Bitbucket, Nexus, etc. And one scripting language like Python or PowerShell, although Python is cross-platform. Next one we have is from Cognizant. Pause the screen if you want to read into it, but here are the main points. The candidate should know the Google Cloud Platform Services, know how to set up a cloud deployment. They should have good fundamentals in network design patterns. They should know one scripting language like Python. They should be aware of the databases and how they work, especially they're requesting no SQL. The candidate should have exposure to configuration management tools like Chef, Puppet, and Sable. They should also know CI CD tools like Jenkins, Mavens, these are DevOps tools. And lastly, they want the candidate to know logging and monitoring tools like Prometheus, Grafana, etc. So let's now filter all of these job descriptions and put all the necessary skills that you would require on the screen so that we can go through them one by one. So in order to become a cloud engineer, you should understand all the operating systems, but especially Linux operating system and its command line interface as this is heavily used in cloud computing. Next up, you should have programming skills, one scripting language like Python, and a database language like SQL, this is an absolute necessity. Next up, you should be well versed in the fundamentals of network and internet. You should know things like what is IP, subnet masks, DNS, what is APN, and so on and so forth. Next up, you should also understand the basics and the fundamentals of virtualization and containerization different tools that are used for these two concepts, what are different types of DevOps tools and how they work. You should know how they fundamentally talk to each other to build a pipeline. Then you should know everything that you can about cloud services and architecture. So start off with cloud computing basics and then work your way towards knowing what different service models are and what are the different types of deployment models like public, private, hybrid, etc. You should also know the fundamentals of security and recovery so that if there is any accidents, you should know what to do. Lastly, you should also be aware of different web services and APIs, for example, XML, SAOP, WSDL. Now, if you don't know any of these skills, we are here to help you out. We will talk more about that later. But first, let's try to make a roadmap in how to become a cloud engineer. So let's look at the roadmap. First, like everything in life, you should know the fundamentals. Start off with software and hardware. Just brush up if you already know these concepts. You should also know all the operating systems. But in particular, learn Linux and command line interface. Programming skills, one scripting language like we discussed and one database language like SQL. 
Also, you should have familiarity with all the databases and how they work, the basics of networking, security, and privacy. Next, try to understand everything that you can about virtualization and containerization, like what it is, how it works, the whole concept, and then learn the tools that are used for virtualization and containerization, like hypervisor, VMware, Docker, Kubernetes, Ansible. You should also know how these tools talk to each other and various other tools talk to each other using APIs and web services. Next on, yes, this is the time to learn everything that you can about cloud. With your fundamentals and the concept of virtualization and containerization, you'd be well equipped to learn everything about cloud infrastructure and services. After you learn the fundamentals of cloud computing, dive deeper into various service models like infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service, and what are the different types of deployment models and how they work. For example, public cloud, private cloud, hybrid cloud, etc. So after we learn everything about the cloud, it's time to move on to learning about DevOps tools. We should be able to identify what a pipeline is and what are different tools that are used to build a pipeline these days. Because one day you might be asked to handle the pipeline or some of the tools that are used in it. So we recommend that you learn Jenkins, Ansible, Docker, Kubernetes, Chef, Prometheus, and so on and so forth. There are many other tools and you can find all of them in our tutorials on YouTube as well as on the website. After learning all the skills and gaining all the knowledge and fundamentals, it is now time to build some hands-on demos and projects. You can utilize the free services offered by Amazon Web Services, Azure, Google Cloud Platform to build a few amazing projects that will help you stand out from the crowd. Finally, after all these steps, it is time to apply for the cloud engineer jobs. And trust us, you will be able to land a successful cloud engineering job. We want to close the video off by giving you a few useful resources to help you get started. So the first resources, of course, are Edureka YouTube channel, where you can find full length tutorials on all the kind of technologies that you might be interested in. Please be sure to check it out. So the next resource could be found on our Edureka website where you can find hundreds of tutorials where we walk you through different technologies and tools so that you can learn by following along. And for the people who need a little bit of help, fret not. We have got some amazing programs for you. Here, let me just show you some of them. So these are the ones on the screen. So as you can see, we have master's programs and we have some certification training programs. Here, let's go to edureka.co and check some of them out. So here are some of the programs that will help you become a cloud engineer. There are some tools, some certifications. There are some master's programs as well. Many of the programs are instructor led instead of just learning from videos. So that is a huge advantage. As you can see, these courses are highly rated. And there's also an option of EMI in case you want to pay monthly. And if you have any questions or queries, please drop them here. Just pop it up and then put your number in, put your email in and then type us a query, submit it. Let us know what your query is and we will be more than happy to help you out. And I'm going to close off by telling you that alumni who took our programs are now working for amazing companies such as Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Cisco, Dell, KPMG, and many more Fortune 500 companies. So we know what we are doing and we know how to help you. Thank you so much for watching the video. Hope you have an amazing day. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!